Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How wonderful it is to be in the presence of the Lord and how marvelous it has been all this time God has walked with us and we can say that he has been so real and so good to many of us because we are still alive. And uh, I want us to talk on something maybe uh, we have never thought of. But it just came to my mind as, as, was, as I was walking around our town and I found, a, I found a chart which was written, you never find yourself until you find the truth. And uh, when that thing come, came, I started thinking about it. And this can be a good beginning for each one of us, even as we begin the year, because every beginning is very important. The beginning of the day, the beginning of the week, the beginning of the month, even, of course, the beginning of the year. How do we find the truth about who we are in God? You know, when I thought about those things, I wanted even to move or to go deeper about finding the truth of who I am in God. What is the meaning of the word truth? According to English Dictionary, it is confirmity to fact, reality, and accuracy of things. So, the title of this topic today gripped my eyes as I was walking around our town. It was hanging in one of the walls of a shop around and my eyes stuck on the words until you find the truth. And I asked myself, what is the truth of the matter? The next statement was, how do you find yourself out? I asked myself, am I lost? Are we lost? out of the truth of God? These are questions to ponder around as we begin the year because we have been in this mountain for too long. The children of Israel were on that mountain and they motioned for 40 years, moving without progress until the generation from Egypt was wept out completely in the wilderness because of ignoring the truth of the word of God. They became gamblers and they became complainers. Maybe you have been complaining for the whole year. And these are facts. These are things sometimes we don't take notice of. The prodigal son was lost, although he was the son of the father. It is until you come back to your senses that he became. He, he discovered he was lost. So it is until we come, come back to our senses, then we understand that we are being lost. In the book of John, chapter number 8 and verse number that one and 32, Jesus gave a serious statement and he was trying to resolve a dispute over whose children Jesus' opponents were. Jesus was opposed by the Jewish, he was opposed by the St. Hendricks, he was opposed by the scribes. Jesus was opposed by everybody. So he was answering back to a statement to his opponent. And Jesus said uh, an analytical truth. Therefore, in this verse he said, verse number that one, to the Jewish who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you, my, you, are, my, you are truly my disciple. And this he said to those Jewish who believed because of the criticism of the truth of the word of God from around. The word of God had been so much criticized because of the wrong reasons. And so Jesus wanted to 
bring them to the point. And verse number 32, he said, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And that's why I asked myself, am I lost? Are we lost? Could it be that many of us are lost in this dark world of great confusion? There is a lot of confusion which is going around each one of us all over the world. The politicians are bringing a lot of confusion. Uh, people are bringing a lot of confusion. So there is a lot of darkness which has been created by this great confusion. And every side of the world is tossing here and about, revolving in great confusion economically, which has been found wanting social life, our politics and families at large, just to mention a few, have not been stable just because of the wrong foundation in the world. However, the Bible distinguishes between those who believe in the shadow, supervicious sense from those who express legitimate faith in the word of God. And this verse explains one of the ways to know the difference of those who truly submit to Christ or abide in his word and those who don't. Like the crowd that followed with him with diverse interest. You know, there are people who follow multitudes with diversity. But, and Jesus, because of that reason, drove the corrupt businessman from the temple. When the Pharisees engaged business in the temple, forcing Jesus to pull his punch for the long reason. You know, we don't want God to pull his punch as he direct it toward us because of the corrupt and the confusion which is surrounding. So he came up with the best statement for each one of us. There was still another crowd of Adratarius group who were gathering on the other side, trying to find fault in his teaching. And that is in the, the beginning of the book of John, chapter number eight, the story of Adratarius woman is a well-known but controversial passage which was to put Jesus on trial. You see, they were looking the word of God uh, to test it and to put it in a trial. But his answer to the Adatarius crowd was complete, pure from mixture of any contamination. So Jesus came with this uh, statement, you shall know the truth, and then the truth shall liberate you thereof because of the great confusion which was running around. And in the book of John chapter number 8 and verse number 12, again, therefore Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This freedom is precious to each one of us. Are you willing to sacrifice to gain and keep the truth? Because there are gains and losses when we endanger ourselves in the truth of the word of God. So however, there is a deeper and more foundation of freedom that we cannot attain by our own effort. Therefore, Jesus asked the condemned woman, where are you accuse us? You know, we have been putting the word of God in great trial, but may God help us to understand it in these last days, even as we have a near breaker as we transit to a new year. In the book of John chapter number 8 and verse number 11, she said, no, Lord, Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go you away from now on and sin no more. You know, this is the truth of the knowledge of the word of God. It's only God who can liberate us from the bondage. The woman was in great bondage, but it's only Jesus who spoke the truth about her life until she was liberated. So even as we anticipate and we look forward, uh, this first day of uh, uh, first hours of the, of, 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 of the year 2022. This is what we call freedom from sin and death. This is the most important kind of freedom we all need. So in today's passage, Jesus is teaching us how to obtain this freedom, which comes from knowing the truth and only God, when we know that lies are characterized to Satan, which leads to bondage and to slavery. 
many of us have been living like, like slaves kwa sababu wamefungwa hawajui watafanya nini lakini hili neno linatuletea jawabu Jesus said I am the light of the world and we all know that light brings and brightens of a new day but darkness is the opposite of the new dawn so we are going in a new dawn so can we change even as our days continue to transit uh, to better in the name of Jesus when strong winds of temptation and human philosophy blows and uh, lowers our moral value we shall go down and stagnate but we must hold on the more firmly to Jesus teaching and his word as we take root in them in Jesus name hallelujah and amen when we take root in his word we are spiritually nourished and can grow even more as we approach a new year with the difference this point of holding to my teaching is to have a vibrant personal relationship with Christ that's what i'm aiming for even as i get a renew i'm aiming to hold and to become vibrantly related to Christ the more peter said in the first letter of peter chapter number 1 and verse number 24 For all people are like grass and all their glory is like flowers of the field the grass with us and the flower falls by the word of God and dures forever one year will come and end another one will come and end even our lives even as the years are renewed we are growing more older and there is a tear and wear of the parts of our body so we are withering but when we hold to his word we come to the truth and have a sure foundation for our life so i thank god for this kind of a statement because it shall bring me to a formation of better truth and i shall grow even more knowing christ and it is a high time as we endure our self in the true teaching of god that we shall be able to understand him even the more i thank god for people like rahab rahab is a good example even though she was not a jewish she understood the truth of what god can do and the bible say he hid the twelve of spies in her ceiling not knowing what he was doing was a confirmation of the truth of the word of god and the bible says after many days when the israelite came to demolish the whole city and they spared rahab because she understood the truth of god word of god so this is a treasure we need to hide in our hearts so that we can continue to know god the more the bible says in the gospel that there was a merchant who was looking for that treasure and he had moved all around to look for it and it is until the time he found the ground that he decided to buy the whole portion of the ground so that he can retain the treasure of the truth of the word of god so so may god help us even us we we close over uh, this year and we move to the next year we shall not be conformed to to the latter uh, latter latter days and the latter uh, thinking of our lives as we renew our mind on daily basis so that we can be renewed uh, to a new year and then we enter the new year triumphantly as this man David entered Jerusalem uh, triumphantly uh, the city of David so I-, i thank god for what he has made us and i thank god for what god has for each one of us the bible is very clear when Je- jeremiah spoke about uh, the future which god holds for us and in the book of jeremiah chapter number 29 all of you can remember this is a scripture we always like to read and verse number 11 and there the bible says for i know the thoughts that i have i think toward you says the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope and a future This is what God is having for store for each one of us. 
Kwa hivyo ni wakati wa ajabu sana. Bwana ametuletea. A lot of people have died. People are dying like rats but we are alive. And it is God who made it this way so shall that we shall be alive and see the dawn of the year. And by this grace there is a promise. Even though things might be tough, but those who are in Christ Jesus, they are going to shine like a star in the name of Jesus. So is even as we continue to celebrate, even as we continue uh, to celebrate uh, this uh, uh, shift from uh, old year to a new year, may we find ourselves when we find the truth of God. What is that truth of God? It is knowing Christ, the hope of glory. He is our God. And for this amusing, and this is, is indeed amusing to our liberation, even as the year ends and we embrace the new dawn of the coming year. It is a year with great promise, a year of great catch. Yes, you can remember the story of Peter when they met with Jesus. He had toiled the whole night. Maybe you have toiled the whole year without getting anything. But this is a nail of great catch because God is asking you to, to deepen your net as you find and seek the truth of God. And then you shall be liberated in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I am too blessed. I thank God for each one of you. For the whole year, those who have been viewing the YouTube and those who have been viewing through the television, may God abundantly bless you. Those who have really supported, yes, God bless you so much. May your faith grow from one level to the other. May God supply you that sufficient grace. Yes, may God continue to supply with all what you need, the finances you need, where your emotions have been touched and have been wounded. May God heal you because you are not a casualty. It's not, you shall not live as a casualty or an IDP. You shall live as a child of God because to all those who believed in Jesus, he made them his children. So you have got that power. Walk with it. You are legitimate son of God. And may God crown your life with goodness and his brightness in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The year 2022 is a blessed year for each one of us. And I want to speak those prestary blessing, blessings for each one of us according to the book of Numbers, chapter number uh, 6 and verse number 22. And this is what God told Moses to be blessing the children of Israel. So when God spoke to Aaron and his sign, saying this, this is how you shall bless the children of Israel. You shall tell them, God bless you. May God keep you the year 2022. God, may God make his face shine upon you and be gracious on you all the days of your life. May God lift his face toward you and give you peace. I speak peace. Shalom, shalom. Year 2022. You are blessed of the Lord because God is going to walk with you because he has got the best plan for each one of us. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. I speak peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you. May God bless Kenya. May God bless year 2022 and may the, uh, may the jubilant of the year accompany you even as you walk according to the status of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are blessed in Jesus' name.